Hello everybody, welcome to part two of the Working Paperless training series, Working Paperless The Basics. In this video you will learn how to create new transactions, fill out contracts and documents online, and we'll finish up this video segment by discussing some of the options and tools that we can utilize after our documents have been created and filled in. I want to preface today's training by stating that our zip form and DocuSign accounts have already been activated and linked. If you are looking for information on activating and linking your zip form and DocuSign accounts, please refer to part one of this series titled Working Paperless Account Setup. If you're looking for information on sending documents via email to customers, clients, and colleagues for electronic signatures, please refer to part three of this series titled Working Paperless Electronic Signatures. If you're looking for information on using ZipForm and DocuSign on smart devices such as tablets or smartphone, please refer to part four of this series titled Working Paperless Smart Devices. Okay, we're in ZipForm now. Where do we begin? Well, what's the first thing that we do when we begin working with a new client or customer? That's right, we dance a jig. After we finish celebrating our recent accomplishment, most of us grab some paperwork and create a new client folder. That's exactly what we do here as well. The only difference is that the documents are electronic and the folders are called transactions. We are currently viewing our transactions. As you can see by the transaction button up here with the blue highlight around it. You can see by my client folder stacked neatly on my computer screen that I'm already working with two clients, Bubba Buyer and Sally Seller. Most of you already know Elsa Hayen, our Director of Interactive Marketing here at ERA Wilder Realty. If you don't already know her, you need to schedule a time to meet with her. I did schedule a time to meet with her, and you know what? She wants me to help her buy a house. So, Elsa is a new client. What do I do? Well, the first thing that we need to do is click up here in the upper left-hand side of your screen. As you can see, I'm making it big. You're going to click on New for a new transaction folder. Clicking New opens up a summary box that just has the summary details of the transaction. We need to do a few things within this summary box. First, we need to name the folder or the transaction. For a buyer, I typically use the client's name. E -L -Z -N. For a seller, I may use the client's name and listing address. There's no right or wrong, just label your files in a manner that is congr congruent with the method you are already used to. Next, we have to tell ZipForm what type of transaction this is, buyer, seller, or lease, and the type of property it is, residential, commercial, land, etc. As you can see here, transaction type, Elsa, for today's demonstration, is going to be a buyer, so we're going to click on purchase, and she's going to be buying residential property, which is already clicked. You can also add a photo to help further identify the transaction folder if you want to. It's not needed, but if you click on Add Photo, I just so happen to have a picture of Elsa. It's on my desktop, so it browses your computer for where the, the picture is. I'm going to click Desktop, and then I'm going to scroll down to find the picture. Here is Elsa's picture. Just click on the picture and click Open and it adds it to this summary detail box. See Elsa right here? Isn't that flattering? Now I want to pull your attention to the middle of the box here. It says Apply Template. If you click on the down arrow next to Apply Template, it shows a list of packets that you can use. Please note that ERA Wilder Realty is located in different MLS areas. Each MLS area uses a few forms that are specific to that area, so make sure that you choose the packet for your MLS. For demonstration purposes today, Els is buying in Columbia. I'm a Columbia agent, so I need to locate the buyer packet for Columbia. So I will go down to find Columbia Residential Buyer Packet. And I'm just going to click on it, and it fills it in here, and then I'm going to hit Save. Clicking Save brings us directly into our new client's file folder where we can then see all of the documents within this buyer packet. There are lots of documents within these templates, some of which you may not ever need. For example, dual agency agreement, designated agency agreement. 
you may never need them. Unfortunately, for all too many agents, the residential contract of sale is something that we may not need either. Hopefully, I will be needing that for Elza. Now, I want to draw your attention to the differences in the file types that you see. You see this blue ZFX file. These ZFX files can be filled out online. These are zip form files. You also see these red PDF files. PDF files cannot be filled out online using zip form. However, there is no need to edit these files as they only require signatures and initials which can be generated by DocuSign. Many of these documents you've seen before. A few may be new to you. In this video, we will not examine each document individually, but I do want to show you how to fill in the fillable forms using zip form. Let's begin by taking a look at the first one in the list, the Acknowledgement of Agency Disclosure Brochure that is published by LLR. To view any of these documents in detail, all you have to do is click on it. Notice in this, as you probably already know, there are no spaces that need to be filled out on this brochure, but it's there for us anyhow. You may want to eventually add initials to this when it comes time for the, the client to sign the documents, but that will be done through DocuSign in a later video. I'm going to click back to go back into our list of documents. Next, I want to click on the exclusive buyer agency agreement to show you how simple it is to fill in a contract. I'm going to go over it. I'm going to click on it. And it opens it up in its own page in detail. I want you to notice these tan colored fields here. These tan colored fields are areas in which you can enter information into this, this contract. We'll start by clicking on the top line which is where you enter in the buyer's name Elza Hayen. You can tab using your tab button through the different fields or you can click onto the different fields to fill in those individual fields. The next line it asks us to put the realty company that we work for. You can type in ERA Wilder or if you have already used zip form after the first time you filled in an area on a document it will give you this little arrow that you can pull down to show you anything you've typed into a field in the past this becomes very nice whenever you are using um, these forms and you've typed in the same thing Columbia or zip codes or even this ERA Wilder Realty Inc in the past you can just click on it and it will put it into the form Um, for today's demonstration purposes, I'm not going to go through and fill out this entire document. Just a few of the areas to get you comfortable to show you how easy it is just to click in a field and type in things in A. For the term, when you click on any box that deals with dates, when you click on that, it will bring up a calendar in which you can scroll through and pick the correct date for the start date. We'll just start it today. For the end date, I've been talking with Elsa and I've discovered that she's very picky, so it probably is going to take me a year to find the perfect house for Elsa. At least I hope I can find it within a year. So I'm going to just, I clicked it to 2015. I'll just click make it a one year contract. Just fill in the rest of these fields as you would on any, as if you were handwriting the contract. Now I'm not going to do that, but I will show you, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, as you're filling in all these fields, you will eventually arrive at the bottom, where you should put in any information that you have on your client, such as address, phone number, but most importantly, email. The reason why this is the most important is because if you do decide to use DocuSign for electronic signatures, it will it will pull the email address from this form so that you don't have to type it a couple times using DocuSign. So let's just put in buddy at era.com. Now I will encourage you to use your email address here 
when you're practicing so that you will receive the same email that your client would see in your email so that you can check your email and do the click through and and practice seeing what your clients going to see so that if they have any problems you can walk them through it okay this is completely filled out well let me put my name down here probably will already have typed it in at some point there we go buddy Rogerson and we're done I'm going to hit back to go back into the list of documents But what if the template does not contain a form that you need, a specific form that you need? Well, if you look to the right side of your screen, you see this it says all forms, and you can collapse it if it ever gets in your way and open it back up if you don't see it. This is your library of forms. In fact, it says select library. There for th this purpose demonstration, there are three libraries. Your MLS area may have more or less libraries that you can choose from as far as forms. We're currently viewing forms that are specific to the Consolidated Multiple Listing Service. We can click on Central Carolina Realtors Association and see forms that come from them. You can click on SCAR, the South Carolina Association of Realtors, and see any forms that come from SCAR that are located you know, in here if, if needed. These dark blue ones are the ones that are already chosen and are located over here. You may say, well, buddy, I need an addendum. Well, you can click on addendum, and it adds the addendum page to your transaction. And there's lots of different forms in here that you can choose from. Now, if you, don't, if you can't find a form, if you say, buddy, I've looked in all the libraries and I cannot find the form I need, you may have to upload that specific form into this transaction folder. We can do that by clicking Add Document. Adding a document will browse your computer when you click Browse for the location of that form. And that has to be saved on your computer. And once you find it, I don't have one here to show you, but once you just click on it and you can hit Open, and it'll it will add that document as it did the addendum in the earlier example. I'm just going to cancel out. Okay. I have completely filled out the buyer agency agreement for Elsa. I'm going to click on it to verify. Okay, everything looks good. I'm going to go back. So my paperwork for her is ready to be signed. Now Let's look at what we can do with these filled out documents. We can click print, which will simply bring up this window that you choose the specific forms that you need to print out at this time. You may, but we're not going to print because we're trying to save paper. So I'm going to hit cancel, and we're going to look at some of the other features we can save the certain uh, documents to our computer as a PDF file. If we click that, it will bring up again where we can choose the documents we want to save and we can save to our computer. But I'm not going to do that either. We can also, if you want to just email the documents to your client, this, um, this uh, button that looks like an envelope says send. Again, you can click that, choose the documents you want to email, type in the email address and the subject line and a message if you want down here, and you just send the email. This is not used for electronic signatures. This is just to email the forms that you filled out. I'm going to hit cancel because I'm not going to do that either. And lastly, I want to point out to you the e-sign button that looks kind of like an ink pen. If you click on e-sign, it will then send the forms that you choose to the client for the purpose of getting electronic signatures. This concludes part two of Working Paperless training series, Working Paperless, the basics. If you have any questions ever, you 
feel free to give me a call, 803-607-7788. Email me at buddy at era.com. Or you can text me to my, my mobile number as well. And I will get to you as soon as I can. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.